Good day everybody, welcome to another episode of Ramble Shrapnel where, well, which is the little bits and pieces that we take from main episodes which you can see linked below for this episode specifically and we talk a little bit about something that you guys have to say based on one of the questions from the main episode. So in case this is the first time that you are listening to a Ramble Shrapnel episode, what we do is from the viewer feedback that we get shared over on the main episodes, whether that's on YouTube or through Discord, we like to take the answers that you guys provide based on the questions that we ask for the main episode and we just spin a little bit of a yarn about that so that you guys can provide us some of your valuable input and yeah we can see where that takes us how far that direction leads we are joined again today by mackie as always my beloved co-host hello i'm glad to be back on another episode of Ramble Shrap. Yep. And we are today going to be talking about the moral decisions in video games. Or at least we're going to be extending upon it. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we were pretty comprehensive with how we covered it in the, the main episode. Um, so if you guys want a full detail or all the details about this topic, please check it out. Again, it is linked inside of the the description on YouTube. But for anyone who's wondering, it's episode 10 from the main playlist. So we're just going to carry on talking about it because we were so comprehensive. But to to expand a little bit more, but in a different way, we're going to talk about how it's not done right in video games. Uh-oh. Yeah, um, I think you can start us off, Mackie, because I just, we value your insight and you generally provide a good <laughs> direction for me to build on. You're probably going to make me oh, yeah. froth at the mouth just by something. <laughs> <situation>. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, the no, no editing required on that sound. Now, everyone has that sound effect, they can use them in any video. I uh, give full rights, just some monetary value. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it is an interesting way because obviously in the original episode in Ramble Shrapnel, we were only pretty much admiring the idea and obviously thinking of beyond, does this actually influence us? But certain game developers like to try to say, oh, that system worked so well there, I'm going to implement it here and here and here. And some games, it just doesn't doesn't click. It doesn't work. Um, I'm sure Jotun has a, a list of games. But there's also the side of where certain morale decisions actually don't make a squat all difference in the end of the game. So although there is like your appearance will change and the world might be slightly affected, the outcome at the end of the day is only one outcome. Your your actions didn't really influence the world. And I know a lot of games that like boast in the trailers or the basically the video game trailers are saying your actions matter or your actions influence the outcome of the world. And again, at the end day, hashtag Linehead Studios. Oof, they did it right. They 100% did it right. But like games that I've heard that have been failing recently, very briefly, is Biomutant. Uh, people were very disappointed in that one. Dishonored was, no, so not Dishonored, uh, Dying Light 2. They like to hype. So that's why you always like watch a trailer and you always throw salt at it. Because they're not always going to achieve the kind of outcome that you would like Jeez, it. dude. That's a heavy uh, level of skepticism. Not like having a pinch of salt with that, but like throwing salt at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the thing because. But, but you're you're very well to be you're you're very correct to be that that skeptical. There's uh, so many games nowadays. Like I've seen so many trailers, and I'm saying, oh, this is going to be the game that's going to like really blow my mind. And they like promise everything. I say open world RPG full of activities and wonders. And they obviously they hype it up so high that I have such high expectations, and then it's kind of like a letdown, where like a moral decision is not really that much of an influence. You just kind of change your color, character's look, and that's not a great outcome. Where like Star Wars Old Republic has like a real good ending for most of the Star Wars games, but the one that I'm going to talk about here, where I was a little disappointed about the outcome, 
Uh, Yotan, I'm not sure. Have you ever played Spider-Man Web of Shadows? No, no, I haven't. Isn't that a, a Sony exclusive? Yes, unfortunately. I played it on my uh, brother's PlayStation 3 at the time. And flip, what a beautifully made game um, of a Spider-Man game. It has... Look, the, the story is not the great the greatest, but it has substance. And it has a real change or a real play around with the morale system. Because in that game, you were not just only Spider-Man. Uh, with a simple tap of a button, you could shift into Spider-Venom. So your Venom symbiote would come out and your attacks would change. You would alternate between a dark Spider-Man and, a, and the typical Spider-Man that we all know and love. And the attacks, obviously, from a Venom symbiote was a lot more brutal, a lot more heavy and destructive. destructive. And you were just, like, so... It was, like, the perfect blend. And you would fight, like, literally on the walls of buildings. So you would have vertical battles. It was just such a clever game. <laughs> until you get to the morale system. And it's one of those typical morale systems which I was so disappointed in. Because in order to get the bad ending which I will talk about why I hate that bad ending so much. You have to physically do... So, no matter what actions you do in the real world, so even in the real world, if you do a lot of good or bad, it means nothing. The only time that the bad actions, or to achieve the bad ending or good ending, ultimately comes to the certain events in the story. So if you were many bad in the, at those points of juncture, then you'll get the bad ending. So, basically, the only time it really mattered was at those events. Outside the world, even though you're killing a lot of people, you're saving a lot of people, it means squat all. You can't get the good or bad end. And she's, I worked my ass off. So I was doing the good ending. I was like, oh, cool. It's all good ending. The good ending is pretty decent. And then I worked my ass off to get the bad ending. And I still got the good e- ending, even though I was like destroying cars, throwing people against walls, and doing really evil things. Just kind of see what the bad ending was. And I still got the good ending. I'm like, but wait, my little morale system says I'm all the way evil. I can't be any more evil. So I was like, okay, what, what the, what the heck? What's happening? Then I have to play the whole game again to do those bad decisions. And then I get the bad end. And it wasn't even worth it because like evil spider venom was really cringy in the final scenes. I recommend whoever guys go into a YouTube video, uh, compare the two and let me know what you think. But I feel the ending is very cringy from dark spider man. It was just like, see, so I've forgotten the name. The original spider man, uh, here to help. Yeah. What's the? It's not Andrew Garfield. It is Peter Maguire, not Peter. Uh, someone Maguire, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire, yeah. yes. Now I remember when Toby Maguire goes down that street and he's like pointing at one side and looking, and he's like in this emo face. Think of like that as the ending for that Spider-Man game. Evil. So it wasn't like even like, whoa, he's cool and powerful like a Sith Lord. No, it was more like nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good game though. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Um, no, I, I'm unfortunately not really a, a Sony pony, <laughs> so I haven't really played that one. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Microsoft fanboy for the most part, but um, no, that, that that does that is a massive bummer when you have to repeat most of the gameplay in order to actually get the types of decisions mm-hmm. you want. Because in a, in a perfect world, you would have the endings of the game set up around pivotal choices that you make in the game. But not to such an extent that if you make a pivotal choice that you can't alter like oh. your your arc on the, the morality mm-hmm. scale, mm-hmm. that continuum. And that's why one of the biggest developers that actually or studios that makes a great morality system is bioware Mm. because i think that they actually made the rubric or the the template for implementing morality into a game Mm. which is with the actual scale from an extreme on the dark and an extreme on the light yeah and um again we we talked about one of them in in the main episode which was knights of the old republic but another area where they excelled with that was well this is going to be a bit of a gripe (laughs) but where they both excelled and fell very short was with the mass effect game yeah because in mass effect one and mass effect two specifically the morality system was amazing all the decisions that you make inside of the game have an act well most of them have an effect on your character's morality 
and you can also change the overall skew of your character's morality with later choices in the game as well mm -hmm. and i believe that there are multiple endings depending on how moral you were throughout your playthrough but then where they really fell short was with the big faff with mass effect 3 <laughs> where <laughs> where like people were having their playthroughs and everything and literally the only difference that it made in the end was the cutscene for the end and people weren't happy about that. But yeah, I think that's the biggest way in which morality is a bad thing in games. It's, it's not really, I think that all games stand to gain from implementing some kind of morality system. But all the times when people think that that isn't true, isn't necessarily because games shouldn't get a morality system or that they're a detriment, but rather that the developer implemented it in such a way that it actually irritated players. And, and that's the thing, like if the morality is the hook of the game, at least in the marketing, then you know, what can developers expect? It's what they promised. Yeah, no, 100%. No, that's the, it's, it's, it's such an interesting, like, from your p opinion, Jotun, I will just give my opinion. Does it really, like, does having a morale system make a game significantly better if it's not a story-based game? Because in my opinion, it, it shouldn't really matter. Because I feel like having just a morale system for the sake of having a morale system and not fully, like, a lot of the game developers go halfway. I feel like it's just a lot of wasted energy and it makes the player slash myself feel like she's now i have to i have to be so careful and not do the bad things that jotun will most likely do and jotun will feel like no i want to be a rebel and want to do the bad things like it kind of forces you to focus on a specific area rather than branching out i'm not sure maybe you have a different opinion i'm sure you do um i actually think that they should be implemented as much as possible but the reason why well, well the reason why i think that is because if it makes you a little bit too conscious of your decisions in the game, then it's not like anybody's forcing you to actually give a damn. Mm -hmm. And maybe I actually think it's a good thing. Like if it does make you think about it the whole time, then maybe you should be thinking about it. Like it's, it's a little bit concerning that people can do actions and not think about the consequences that their actions bring about. Mm -hmm. Even... Look, granted, video gaming is a form of entertainment and people don't want to think about the hard questions in life all the time. But the, the fact of the matter is that video gaming is an interactive medium. And that's why I think that it's the, the apex medium that's out there mm -hmm. today. And, um, you know, if you, if you really want to take the back seat, then geez, bro, go watch a movie or a, <laughs> a TV series or something. Then you don't play a part. But in video games, you play a part. And if you're not confronted with those a lot of people need to have some kind of thing that they actually produce in order to be able to analyze the ways that they think and act in the world. And that's another reason why video games are so amazing, because games with moral decisions can show you how acting in that way will result. Now, um, to recap the main episode a little bit, one of the things that I said was that it's a, uh, moral decisions in video games is an amazing way for you to test what those mm. decisions would make happen, even though you would never do that kind of thing in real life. But that's because you have this record in the game state in the form of your save files of what you did in the past. But in normal real life, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the valuable thing. But briefly now, because we're drawing close to the episode, to answer your question, <laughs> um, I think that it should be in games. And the, the way in which it should be done as well, ideally, is that you want the moral decisions to have a ripple effect on the game world as well. Like, mm. to recap a bit on the main episode again, Black and White is an amazing game that does that because it changes yeah. your actual character and the things that's associated yeah. with him, which is your floating hand and your temple and your creature. But it also changes the game world, you know, because if you become evil, then the skies will become darker and more cloudy and red. Um, whereas if you're light, then it's bright and sunshine and there's like butterflies <laughs> and things flying everywhere. 
you know? So that's the ideal kind of situation you want. You want the world to be representing to you what your actions are also doing, you know? Now, it's a, it's a bit more difficult in mm-hmm. something like a FPS game or something. But, I mean, you could easily slap on some filters and vignettes showing that your character is going a bit crazy. Like, uh, it's, it's not really morality-based, but um, you could do something like Don't Starve, except instead of it being a <laughs> yeah. sanity meter, it can be like an evil meter. A morale yeah, meter. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the, the more evil you become the more evil things start to show up. And the more good you become, the more resources and things start to show up. Although as a dev, so, that would be a very difficult balancing act in terms of <laughs> nerfing the difficulty. But um, I mean, I mean, you can, you can drop more resources and things and then make nighttime more difficult or something, you know? There, there are ways to yeah. balance that. Yeah. I think that's, I think you've just revealed something why what I don't like about morale system. And I think the only thing I dislike about it are the endings. I actually, like you mentioned before, I like the the world events, the character changing, the powers and influences of that. But I think what I dislike is the ending because you not all games do it, but a certain games, they conf- like I said before, why I disliked the Spider-Man one was mainly because only certain events caused you to get that certain ending. And I think that's what I dislike about it. I feel like a good and a bad ending is subject to... It's it's just... I think that's what influences me most. Because if I was playing Bioshock, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the main episode or not, but in Bioshock, you have these little girls, and the more you take, uh, take their power from them, the little sisters, yes. The more you take the power, the more powerful you become. But there's a certain threshold. So if you've taken four or five little sisters, you de- you're destined for the bad end. But if you can take like three, uh, less than four, you destined you destined for the good end, which is what I I don't know. Uh, maybe that's an area that I quite don't like about the. I feel like they're not satisfying, and I feel like that's where I dislike it the most. I love the character changing. I love the personality and everything. The world changes. They're all slight nudges or. A slight signals that you are not quite as good as you could have been. But I think when you have like a conclusion that said you've been bad and then everyone around you is dead and all you got in this power, I'm like, oh well, that's a bit of a disappointing ending. Otherwise, I did save all those other humans that I didn't kill, but okay, let's just focus on you're bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. I can't, I can't argue against that. Oh, I won, guys! I won. You hear? I still think I've made a big, better argument, but okay. I agree. No, I, you you made you gave me that realization. So basically, without you uh, talking about all those parts and interesting parts, I think I wouldn't have come to a realization of what I don't like about morale decision games. And it's pretty much just the conclusion because it's so fixed stated. Because obviously, as a game developer and as a coder myself, you can't predict every outcome and scenario. So even if you were the worst person in the story, but the best person out of the story. It's so hard to determine, like, hey, uh, guys, what middle ground should we do? And there's certain games that, like, show you, you were nice to this person, so they made a brilliant business, and then you're bad to this person, and then they just ended up going suicidal. I'm like, whoa, that's dark. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But okay, everybody, there you have it. Mackie says that I, I won again. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let us know what you think about morality in video games and what you think is the wrong kind of implementation about it as well. You can comment on the YouTube or you can tell us directly in Discord where we're the most active. But otherwise, like, share, subscribe, comment, ring that notification bell, all of that on YouTube, or give us a five-star review or however many stars you think we're worth on any of the other podcasting platforms, and let us know. Keep well, everyone. Wait, 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 before there, guys, if you like this episode very briefly, there's a full episode on Ramble Shrap- Shrapnel, not Shrapnel, Shramble. Please go listen to that if you really enjoyed this. There's a lot more content and we've got a lot more interesting, bigger, fuller episode. Yes, but that's it from us, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.